TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are not live. Or we are live. My bad. <laughs> so you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. If we do go live and you happen to miss it, go to twitch.com. Type in T-H-E-E -E underscore L-I-T underscore O-N-E. You can fast forward. You can rewind. You can go to previous lives and you can do your thing there, man. Don't forget we got merch. Appreciate everybody who's caught some. And we also got Patreon. We post Monday through Friday. And anything that can't go on YouTube, we put it on there, man. There's even a free version where you get to watch stuff. For now. <laughs> ah. Team of armed officers respond to a house full of firearms. Let's get into it, man. This is a weird episode. I don't know what it is. It's like an hour and 11 minutes, and then some of it is cut up, but whatever. In West Yorkshire, armed defences have doubled in just four years. Oh, police! Firearms cops here are tasked with one mission. Got it. Get the guns off the streets. Arms cops here are... I'm not gonna lie, this is a weird way to hold this. I don't think I'll be holding it right there. I think I'll be right in here with it. But anyway. Are tasked with one mission. Got it. Get the guns off the streets. Turn around. Turn around. You're out right to your right. And bring those using them to justice. Keep your hands free to tell them. Get to your knees. Stay down. We are seeing a big increase in, in, in the use of firearms at the moment, sort of criminally. There's been a particular flare up in this area, in the Huddersfield area, between a couple of the gangs. We're obviously trying to, trying to get on top of these, but the big thing as well, the big thing tonight is we want to get these weapons back. <laughs> tonight, a team of firearms cops are mobilising for an intelligence-led operation. The intelligence-led operation, that's cold word for somebody was snitching. And, and we want to go pull up to investigate. Plan is to raid two properties, looking for suspects thought to be connected to gun crime. Providing backup, dog handler Duncan Matthews. I've got police dog Tia with me tonight. She is a firearm support dog. Um, so when, when we get to the address, she goes in and makes sure it's safe for everybody else to go in afterwards. Duncan and Tia have taken part in dozens of armed raids weeding out some of West Yorkshire's most dangerous criminals. In the UK, yeah, I think. 80s or 90s. About thing. 30 seconds from the address. And so we've got to get to the address as quick as we can now. Try and secure the suspect. The first suspect is wanted on suspicion of firing a weapon in public. Cops must tread carefully. <coughs> Quiet. <coughs> An intel suggests there could be multiple weapons in the house. Locked and loaded, the team prepare to make their move. The dog from the give it away for you. Somebody up at two two. A silhouette in an upstairs window. He's very Can you go down to your front door? Yeah. He claims he's coming down, but they're taking no chances. This is where he's going to be put under control, just down in front of this vehicle here, just down there. Shh. Hands on your head, mate. Hands on your head. Walk slowly towards me. Stand me back. Don't make any sudden movements. Keep walking. Right, stop there. Turn around. Face away from me. Go down to your knees. Hey, bro, this is the crazy part about that UK, man. They get any type of intel. You could have a rusty revolver from 200 years ago. They come into your door like this. In the crosshairs of multiple automatic rifles, he's on his knees. Entry team confirmed, subject is secure. And singing like a canary. It's just secure, sir. Here, hopping with ice. There's a shotgun at top of the steps. 
an air rifle, and downstairs in the kitchen is a um, Glock 19 replica airsoft. He's Glock 19 replica airsoft? So he got two airsoft guns and a, and a, and a, and a shotgun. Amassed quite an arsenal, but before retrieving it, cops need to be sure none of his mates are hiding in the house. Do we have uh, any communication with them? And there's another problem. His girlfriend is still in the address. Um, his girlfriend's in there and there's three children in there as well. Officers are going to go to the front door, speak to her there, and basically negotiate her to come out with the children. We need them out of the house before we can search it properly then, make sure there's nobody else in there hiding. After 10 minutes, the suspect's partner finally appears and she and the three young kids are safely away. Our police, anybody in the address, make yourself known now. Police for the dog. <laughs> Tia rushes in where armed men fear to tread. Right, she's gone back along the landing. I can see a shadow moving around on there. Come. Dog's safe, no indication. It's gone well. Tia's gone in. She's done what she needed to do. I'm fairly happy there's nobody else in now. Just made it that little bit safer for the firearms team to go in now. Occupants of the house, our police. Show yourself now, please. Open door straight, Ed. Floor by floor, room by room, armed cops scour the family home. Right. Man, that's crazy. If this is... Clear, room, clear out. Entry team to bronze were first aiding upstairs. They soon locate the imitation shotgun and air rifle the man told them about. Oh, they're all imitation? So none of these are real, which is not illegal. But I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> if somebody was to see this, I could imagine. Plus, something iffy in the attic that he conveniently failed to mention. Ah. Certainly with places like this. Yeah, that's why you're going to jail, buddy. Got cannabis grows in there, they're looking at protecting them, whether that's why he's got that um, imitation weapon or not, I don't know. Had he come to the window or the door holding that, um, looking how real it is, I think it would have ended very differently to how it just has done now. The house will be placed on lockdown before being turned over the next day by specialist search teams. But for Duncan, Tia and the firearms unit, the night isn't over yet. Extra Delta Wait, so where the, where the kids and the girl going? Say so briefing received, no questions. Their next suspect has served time for GBH. And now he's wanted on suspicion of attempted murder. Uh, low key, I was thinking that too, man. They said in the comments in the chat, they said, so Tia, the dog, was they crash dummy. Pretty much. Y'all gonna send that poor dog in there first. What if it was really up in there? You know what I'm saying? And somebody was on smoke with the dog. Intelligence that we have on this suspect is that he's potentially a lot higher threat than the previous one. Obviously, we deal with each threat on an individual basis. With the stakes high, there's no time to hang about. Oh, police! Oh, police! Come to the door! Do it now! If no Two in a row? one answers, they'll have to force entry. Occupants! This is the end, police! Show yourself! Occupants! Still no response. Two lights on. Someone's finally got the message. Show yourself! Several loaded guns are trained on the front door. Well, bro, she came out in Christmas. <laughs> I, this is... I get it, y'all doing your job. Who's Not the on? armed bad guy they were expecting. Who else is in? In the house? Yes. Excuse me. It's the suspect's mum. Oh my god. You got this at your mom's crib? That's that's L son. That's an L son. Apparently her son isn't home, but he's due back any minute. It's not ideal because at the moment he's not under our control. Well, we don't know whether he's got the weapon, so this is what we're just gonna we're gonna have to sort out now. Make sure as soon as he gets here, we've got control of him and he can't change his mind and go somewhere else. Hold on, Nathan, hold on. Let's have it. 
Engine off on the car, please. Let me see your hands, Chief, when you get out. It's a hell son to even potentially bring this type of smoke to your mom crib. Like, you, you're moving crazy. Hands up for me, buddy. Come out to some sea car. He's happy to cooperate, but this man is known to have a violent past. Please watch the ones then. Stand there. Stand there. Stand still. 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 Apparently. He's unarmed, and the car's clean too. So where's the gun? Oh, police! Anybody in the address? Make yourself clear. A quick search, and still no weapon. But with two wanted men off the streets, Dunk satisfied with a job well done. We've got both suspects in custody. We, we've come out. We've done what we wanted to in the end. Um, that, that was the ultimate. Aim. I don't even know if you can look. Your mom gonna look at you. Your mom gonna look at you the same. But like, that's tough. Um, the ideal thing would be if we can find the weapon now that's been used. Um, but ultimately, we want to get the person in custody. But we've got to do it safely. Yeah, you know, that's happened tonight, um, and everyone's everyone's safe. So yeah, we're happy with that. No action was taken against the first suspect with regards to firing a weapon in public. He is, however, still under investigation for production of cannabis. Yeah, he's he got to get for that at least. Then bro had a whole palm tree of it in the crib. It's a palm tree. The second suspect was released without charge. Wait, I thought he was a wanted man. Didn't they say he was wanted? Both of these people were wanted? So they lied. Not surprised. It's a quiet summer's evening, so interceptors Ben Pearson and Matt Ransom can't miss the sound of a hot hatch begging to get pulled. Let's have a look at this golf here. What do you do? A white Golf GTI has oh. burned it from the lights, oh. leaving the Friday night traffic for dust. But Ben's no slouch from the lights and on it in seconds. Just the attitude that people have got, it's nine o'clock at night. Lights have just gone to green. Just the attitude that people have got. It's nine o'clock at night. Lights. You said it's nine o'clock at night? Look how, what the? Seconds. This is 9 p.m. for y'all? That is sensational. That is amazing. <laughs> just the attitude that people have got. It's nine o'clock at night. Lights have just gone to green. And lad in front thinks it's uh, Grand Prix at Silverstone. Petrolhead Benny Boy is a big fan of high-performance motors, but has little time for low-performance drivers. And thinks he can just give it beans, and everyone's got to accept that he can drive how he wants to do what he wants. Oh, this is dude with the podcast, right? This is the dude with the podcast. We reacted to some of his videos, some of his podcast stuff. He was really going through it during these filmings. So we'll just have a quick word with him. Very, very good stuff. Oh, I just don't know where he is. The driver's got a heavy right foot, but it doesn't look like he's trying to get away. It looks likely he's no idea there's a cop on his tail. No blinker. Never seen you. Ben will soon take care of that. Turn it off. Finally, the penny's dropped. What's your car keys? Is your car? I no. Right. That's a rental car. Jump out. Both the driver and his female passenger are dressed to impress. Hey, right, bro, on his first date. What do y'all see? I hope this boy got all his paperwork. I don't even think he was going over the speed limit. He was just going fast. Like the speed limit might be 30 miles an hour. He was getting to 30 miles an hour very quickly from, from a stop. And that's not illegal. But it'll take more than a dicky bow to impress Benny Boy. <laughs> Do lad. You can't. So first of all, calm yourself down. I can't. Who's his car? You told me. Yeah. Oh, uh, has hired off someone. 
hired who? 007 says the GTI's hired from that well-known rental firm, a friend of a friend. Right, so how much have you hired it for? £150. For the night? Yeah, we'll Whoa, £150 for a night. It's a nice car. It's a nice car, yeah. And how are you insured? Insured? Yeah. He told me it's temporary insurance. No. Surprise, surprise. There's no paperwork to back up his claims. How old are you? 18. 18? Wow, 18 driving a Golf GTI. Benny. Why are you talking to him like that? I feel so belittled. Like, bro, I'm a grown man, man. You know what I'm saying? Hey boys, heard enough. Right, listen, listen. You're driving like an idiot. Okay. Speed kills. Yeah, it does. Right, so what do you do at the bottom of Barkerham Road? I'll give you a clue. Bop, bop. So what do you do then? Do you want me to give you another clue? Bop. What do you do when you turn down Bottom of Leeds Road? Bop. Then what do you do when you turn up back at Telegraph and Argus? No, it looked like he's arrived at his destination already, though. I see other people outside. Acceptable. With... And these, these, them, them two people who are walking up here, when they drive like an idiot, doing 40. Yeah? It's a higher car, apparently. That's not a higher car. Oh, dear. Oh, me oh, yeah. The dodgy hire is an all too familiar story for the interceptors. This is what we have all the time. And people like you, no disrespect, naive do what someone tells them to do or says yeah take it and believe I'm insured you're not have you got any proof of any insurance um, not on you. no no oh, yeah. how long have you been driving for uh, I've been passed for nearly a year now do you know when you in your first two years of driving what happens if you get more than six points you get your license revoked yeah so you have to pass your test again do you return to a prisoner license holder yeah okay Unfortunately for this lad, having no insurance will earn him the full half dozen, so it's bye-bye license. Dang, no insurance? You get six points? I never understood the point system, but somebody explained it to me in the comments, but still, it's like, eh. Do you know what the biggest kick in the teeth is? If he'd have just driven off slowly, you wouldn't have got stopped. I didn't even see you to be I know. Do you know why that is? Lack of experience. The golf is getting seized. How do you feel with his driving? Don't like India. And to make matters worse, this was no ordinary date. You know what it is? It's this day. Been looking forward to it for a long time. Right, what is going on? Is it a dance? It's like a... Have you finished school, haven't we? Is it a prom? Yeah, it's like a prom. The young couple have just arrived at the hotel. Hey, you there at least. Just go inside, finish your day. <laughs> you figure out the car later. Tell for their high school prom. Signature on that uh, bit there. Give him a Where? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you pulled up in style. I've got a signature. Like a... You'll get one when you get older. <laughs> Not only is the lad losing his license, he's missing the biggest social event of the year, and now every school kid's nightmare. Hello. They're arresting him too. Are you teachers? Yeah. What's your? Oh no, teachers are here. Double trouble. Here you go. Time to face the music. Yeah, no, he's not missing it. <laughs> I'm going inside, 100%. If this is me, I'm going inside. You have not ruined my night. I'm still going to tee up and I'm going to call a, a taxi to get me later. And whoever rented, rented you the car, that's on you, buddy. You didn't have no insurance in this car. You told me you did. Oh, well. If there's trouble inside, I am telling you now, I'll make your life miserable. Nothing's going to happen inside. So just, I can't say. just make sure. Right. Okay. Cinderella shall go to the ball after all. Prince Charming was reported for no insurance, and because he could potentially receive six points, he may well lose his license. Uh, I don't want to ruin his problem, but it has done. But he should have thought about that before he set off like an idiot from traffic lights. No cap, you did not ruin his problem. He probably still executed what he had to execute. He probably still did prom night things. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He still probably had a great time. Oh, yeah? Was it result for shots, please? <laughs> Coming up! You did not change the outcome of his night. People probably walked up to him and questioned him the entire night. Like, oh, man, you could... What was you doing? Like, he probably felt like the man in there. Interceptors Chris Basto and A.D. Fickling have just kicked off the night shift and are already painting the town blue, hunting a wanted motor. They were a vehicle that made off from uh, 
couple of lads over there, Suzuki Ignis, met off twice and, and uh, it's been sighted again by district officers, Castleford area, so we're just making his way down into that area now and hopefully it'll pop out again. The runaway is well known to the cops, but he's a slippery customer, Houdini in a Suzuki. It failed to stop for me yesterday as well, so yes, it's personal. it would be. You can't personalise it. It's not personal, it's not personal, but it would be very nice to get them because they failed to stop for Chris and our team as well a couple of days ago. It's personal. You don't got to lie to us like that. <laughs> we know how you're moving. Just give it the street where it was seen last. Eyes right, fellas. So that, that's that. it. Now Chris has him on the hook and this time refuses to let him wriggle free. Yeah, 6-1, uh, we're behind the Suzuki Ignis uh, vehicle failed to stop. Having been given the slip once on these roads, Chris reckons he knows Houdini's MO. If we go to Fryston Woods, we need somebody to Fryston Woods a bit. Somebody get to Fryston Woods ASAP, please. To lose a Suzuki once could be regarded as a misfortune. It's left, left, left onto Kendall Drive. To lose it twice would be carelessness. Stand by, we're still on the green, just hold on, it's going off-road, it's going off-road at the green, Go into the left. woods. Is that a Scouser officer? The boys' Beamer 3 Series is no off-roader, but interceptors don't give up that easy. Because it's personal, he's going to try. The thing is, he could just leave it parked in woods and go for walkers. See how far it is. I'm happy to run till I puke to get these. <laughs> If we find this car down here, I'll be chuffed. Occasionally, a walk in the woods can help focus the mind. Oh, it's quite it open, isn't it? turns left, because you could see it turn left. For some... I ain't even gonna lie, I need backup. I need a dog. I'm not going in the woods. It's dark, too. Good old-fashioned detective. Not no American woods, at least. <laughs> work. There's, like, reflective lights on the floor. Yeah, I've seen that. As if they've been done on purpose. Yeah. It's been skidding as well, look at that. It's been skidding like mad. The signs are promising. How are we going to get out of here? I don't know. I'm not bothered about walking a few miles though. But the one that got away, they'll go the extra mile. Thing is, right, we've got to find a way back to the car. In full Blair Witch territory. See? Oh, don't exactly go too far out of the I might get scared. There's wolves around here. 15 minutes later, they spot something, and it's not Little Red Riding Hood. Oh, reflector up there. Yeah, it's there, look. Found it. Get in. Awesome. Bingo! The driver's ditched the Suzuki and disappeared, and he's taken the keys with him. The problem is, we're in the middle of woods. We'll get it out, mate. I've got a trick up my sleeve. Before joining the force, motorbike fanatic and advanced driver AD was a hotshot mechanic. If you want a motor gone in 60 seconds, AD's your man. We're just gonna... They be trying to tr make these officers' li previous lives sound amazing. I just don't see it. <laughs> to put our trust in no, here, no offense. The drivers back to our car. So that might be a bit dicey, but yeah, very very happy. So it turned out to be a good little job. But they're not out of the woods just yet. Um, oh, he's doing it. No gas. That motor's knackered, isn't it? Oh, mate, that nearly did it. I know, I got really excited. I thought we'd done it and then. Well, I just. I like to. I like to. Oh, that's nearly done it. Yeah, 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 6-1, uh, we can't get it started, this car, so we're not going to be able to get it out. If we can organise recovery with a 4x4, because that's the only vehicle that's going to be accessible into these woods. The recovery van will be an hour. A long time to sit in the cold, dark woods, twiddling your thumbs. There's no way this car's going to go anywhere now. So we can walk back to the car, wait for recovery, we can jump it 4x4 and show him how to get here, car. Yeah, yeah. It's not... No, but you know what? It might be a kill switch on it and that they can't see. That they overlooking, and they gonna go sit in that car for an hour, and they are gonna come back. Buddy gonna be gone, maybe. That'd be elite negativity for police interceptors. It's what we wanted, but we got car. The main thing is we got car. Exactly. I'm happy with that. 
Are we going to remember which way we're going here? Yeah, we'll remember it. Yeah, we should have some, we should have a ball of string, shouldn't we? <laughs> it's easy, Hansel. Just follow the trail of tyre tracks. They're going to come in the morning and... Uh, exactly. The little car's not going to be there, Have his key in hand. And always stick to the path. Straight down there, or did we come round till we came round that way? I'm not sure. <laughs> they lost. Lads? We're lost. It didn't come through there, it's too tight. It didn't innit? come through there. Ah, right. I wonder if it's come this way. Right, I'll just go see if there's any marks up here. Hold on. In fact, it is. Oh, Christ. I think that fork down there, we should have gone right. I don't remember seeing that. I have no idea, Eddie. Really. Well, let's just wing it. This is turning out to be a shambles. Don't come out that one. This is not fun now. <laughs> I think it gets light about half four in the morning. By that time, we should be able to find his way out of the woods. If I stand in dog turd, I will not be happy. Yeah, I might run into we the We are suspect. walking the right way. Are we really? After an hour's rambling, I have no idea I've managed to cock that up so badly. They find the path to freedom. What's Where, worrying though is the, the car's that far away. Have we over, overdone it by that much? <laughs> we overshot it by about a kilometre, haven't we? <laughs> it's taken them so long to get out, the recovery van's already arrived. Super, you just timed it right. Which means they've got to turn around and head straight back into the woods. <laughs> that is hilarious. <laughs> this is a funny shift. It's just like being at Serengeti, isn't it? <laughs> All we need now is David Attenborough narrating this. To the left, you can see the lions. <laughs> there, there it is, it's it a funny look. Hey! Wasn't that far away, was it? Since the car won't start, they've got to drag it out. We'll give it a try. We aren't bothered about any damage on there. If it rips me, I'll send it off because it gets stuck. We'll just torch it and leave it. Well, we won't torch it, we'll just leave it. We won't torch it. <laughs> right, this is going to be the ride of our lives. They are not funny. Like, it's so cringe that it's not, it's funny, but it, they're not funny. <laughs> this time, they've got fresh tyre marks to follow. So far, so good. Finding their way out should be a breeze. Allegedly. Yeah, is this where we should turn right? I don't know, because I didn't see it. I was too busy talking, but I don't remember this bit. Oh, bugger me. Lost again, and AD knows who's to blame. Vehicles, I think he'll still be looking for him, but he has not um, as this smell at the moment. A wise man once said, it's not the destination, but the journey that counts. <laughs> he clearly never travelled with AD and Chris. There's wall, look, there's wall. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yes, get in there. Several hours after they first spotted the Suzuki, it's finally on its way to the pound. <laughs> Why did it look like a smart car? They got outsmarted by a smart car? <laughs> Don't mess with us, Chris, eh? Because we'll drag your car out of anywhere. Probably one of the funniest shifts I've had in a long time, yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> Ravio, 6-1. 6-1, one. One, finally got this motor out of woods. We're alive and well, and we're going to go get something to eat. Happy days. Peace. Peace. A month. But since cops in London were given new powers... Still two up. No helmet. Worth of On Monday at nine, Chris Tarrant, three million pounds worth of two wheelers swap. That's why this episode is so long. Right every month. Ooh, here now. But since cops in London were given new powers, still two up, no helmets. To chase runaway riders without helmets and use tactical contact to end a pursuit. Coming towards you now, on your left. Bike theft in the capital has dropped by 50%. Get out! Now Tactical West Yorkshire Police are crazy. following suit. Yeah. Whoa. You can answer some questions, Cocker. Without discussing tactics of that and what we do with them. It follows the same principle of pursuing a car. You've got to weigh up who's on it, what you know about them, 
Has it been used in crime? The only thing is the motorcycle is a lot more nimble. It can go places that a car can't go. There are different tactics. Hold on. Tics for them, and hopefully it's getting out there that the uh, we will pursue motorbikes. It's a Wednesday afternoon, and rookie Joe Waring is getting a crime-busting masterclass from veteran interceptor Nick Good. Joe's a new recruit, uh, so we're just showing him ropes. So we'll be looking various different traffic offences if we can. All right. Also, we'll be looking potentially if there's any motors that have been stolen overnight. It's a good time for things to move. Mm. Yeah. So it may pop up, and then we'll we'll go for it. All right. right. Happy with that? Absolutely. Lovely. Midland Road, stolen bike, stolen bike. So we've got stolen bike. Shazam! Down on Midland Road. A motorbike reported stolen has been seen less than a mile away. It appears to be uh, an off-road motorbike with uh, an unknown driver on at the moment. Failed to stop for police. One unit's already in pursuit. SDF motorbike, And the chopper's all over the runaway riders. Just kind of got a chopper in. Go ahead, pull over, man. It's done. They got the chopper on you immediately, buddy. You're going the to jail. putting the bike through its paces. Throwing it around on the road. And ramming home its advantage off it. Springfield Crescent, Springfield Crescent. But this guy's Noel Valentino Rossi. And interceptors are quickly within range. <laughs> As they hang a sharp left, only the quick thinking of an interceptor averts disaster. But can they avoid Nick and... And there's two of them on there? So y'all really ride nut to butt in a police chase. Joe, who were just up ahead. After his close shave, Nick's got the bit between his teeth. The runaway riders head into a busy residential area. But what they don't know is the police have set a trap. With the road blocked, they plough through a hedge and both riders go flying. Hang on, hang on. I jumped it. But well, they're up on their feet and away on their toes. You know what's crazy is they got through there, but they just like hit them. What did they hit? A garbage can? <laughs> but Nick and Joe are closing in. Get ready to jump out. Yep. Yeah, rookie. Kelly keeps tabs on the driver. On your marks. Get set. Ready? Ready. Go, 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 go. Rookie Joe is out the traps. Can he catch his man? Danny? Just kind of got a chop on him. Interceptors have been in hot pursuit of a stolen motorbike. <laughs> Rookie interceptor Joe is hot on the heels of the driver. Who opts for the spectacular? He launches himself over a five foot fence without clocking the ten foot drop the other side. That wasn't smart over at all. Over the road, not so evil can evil isn't so. Well, he broke his chest bone. He's definitely out of air. Knocked the air out of him, so. Such a daredevil. Yeah, they've got, they've got one. They've got one retainer in that garden.
With one in cuffs, it's left to rookie Joe to nick the fence jumper. But he can't find him. Probably rolled under the shed. He hurt. Police officer, stop, stop, stop. Stop, stop, stop. Jump over the fence. He's just over there. X-ray Romeo 17, one detained where I am. One detained where I am. The Send an ambulance. Moving. Are there any units that can go around the other side? One male sustained injury jumping off a fence. It's a bit of a drop. There's quite a high fence. Come round this side, you'll be able to pick him up easy. The suspect still isn't moving. So Joe slides down the fence to check he's okay. What if you injured then, mate? What injuries have you got? Meanwhile, back on the other side of the fence, Nick's found some items of interest. So we've got balaclava and uh, ski goggles. West Yorkshire is hardly a winter sports hotspot. Veteran traffic cop Nick has been on the force for 17 years. In his spare time, he plays rugby league and is trained in first aid. What's hurting, pal? On the right side. All of your right side? All of it. All right. Quite what, your leg, your foot, your hip? Right, all my leg, my ankle. Right. My hip, my st where my ribs are, and the elbow, and now... Shoulder. There. And my shoulders. All just around that side? All down there. No. Have you looked before you jumped? No, I jumped over the glass table next to me, you know. Angel's a fine one. Right, okay. He said that he's fallen to his right hand side, so he can't feel anything on his right, uh, which is a bit of a concern. So he's going to need looking at properly by uh, paramedics. I'm just going to take a look at it now. Yes, yes, he's conscious and breathing. Uh, he's complaining of pain down his right hand side, mainly in his elbow and his uh, ribs. Imagine running from the police, jumping a fence, and then waking up paralyzed. Bet you wish you wouldn't have did that. That is a high fence. Look how high the fence is, bro. You got to look before you do things. Like, this is dangerous. You're not Michael Jordan. You can't fly. If you're not one of them people that be jumping up from building to building in the parks, don't try it. Don't lean forward. Just, just keep still for me, mate. Uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to hurt that, pal. Oh, OK. All right, mate. You've got quite a quite a deep gash there on the back of your head. All right. Does your neck feel okay? No. It doesn't. You feeling any different to how you felt before? Yeah. Go on, talk to me. Tell tell me how different you feel. Go to sleep. I got to go. You what? Sorry. Go to sleep. Do you want to go to sleep? Go. Yeah. Don't go to sleep, mate. All right. Nick doesn't want to risk don't the lad it. falling unconscious, so does his best to keep him talking. Our ambulance is here now, mate. So that's absolutely fine. All right. Paramedics decide the lad needs his head and neck braced before stretching him off to the ambulance, where rookie Joe gets to read him his rights. For Joe, good job. Yeah, cracking job by Joe. Um, he was ready, ready for it, belt off, ready to go with this one. As soon as he went, he went off over this fence and detained him. Nice, uh, nice prisoner for uh, a young officer. Lad was treated in hospital and is on the road to recovery. Oh, uh, okay. Both suspects were arrested for theft of a motor vehicle, dangerous driving, and failed to stop. The lad in the garden was also arrested for possession of a Class B drug. The investigation is ongoing. You probably get away from that. Hmm? Shoot, at this point, I think the driver didn't have enough of a punishment. <laughs> broke back, broke uh, all type of stuff. Life's never dull for the interceptors because sometimes even the smallest jobs can blossom into something much, much dodgier. I've stopped cars where it's just literally to give them words of advice for having a light out or something and they've ended up having a boatload of trucks in the car and stuff like that. That's one of the good things about traffic really. From small acorns you get big trees. 
That's a great analysis. I'm primed to chop down trees tonight. Has this vehicle stopped? Yes, yes. Sophie Hawkswell and Chris Harding, who've been called to help mop up after a pursuit in Hawkswell and Chris Harding, who've been called to help mop up after a pursuit in Leeds. Outside the old Ford Green, if you know that. The car was Those spotted doing donuts in the city centre before being pursued and brought to a stop. It's shown previous keeper not insured, etc. So they're doing some inquiries in relation to that. Um, but whilst they've done that, there's obviously been something that's indicated that perhaps the driver may not be in a position to be driving said vehicle uh, because they've just asked us to bring along a drugs wipe. Sophie's nickname is Big Dog. She's a Thai kickboxing champion and nothing winds her up more than drug drivers. I'm not going to lie, she looked like she could fight. Didn't I say that last time? This is the same one, ain't it? Yeah. Sophie looked like she could fight, 100%. When Sophie and Chris arrive on the scene, the two suspects have already been detained. Sophie goes to frisk the female while the car is searched. Possibly yes. just one street deal of heroin. That was just for starters. More wraps of suspected Class A's are discovered. Class A oh. And Big Dog's caught another scent. That's what stinks. There's some cannabis. Oh, I believe to be cannabis found in your rear pocket. I'm just going to bob these on you. All right, I'm just going to put you over to the back of the car. Wait, just lift 50 on up a little bit higher. That's it, lovely. Thank you very much. Alex, have you got keys for the van? Take a seat in there, watch your head. And just take a seat on there, farmer. Drugs in the car, drugs in the coat. Will it be a full house with the drugs and the driver? Positive for cannabis. Bingo. As you can see, double line that's come up on top. They did say he had coke two days ago, but that's not come through, so. As well as the weed and the Class A's, police have found several mobile phones and a large amount of cash. So they was a trapped. criminal mastermind, this guy certainly isn't. This car's been... He's, pro he's probably... This is what I would call a dumb criminal. You got all of that stuff in the car, right? And you doing donuts in the city centre. Like, are you stupid? That's not smart. What is whatever happened to being low key? I'm doing donuts uh, just up the road at Amberley Road, drawing attention to himself to the police. I'm guessing he's been shown off in front of his girlfriend because he's made off. Uh, obviously, the police have gone after him, and as you can see, it's not gone too well for him. He's tried to go round cars here. I'm guessing he's hit the tree or the post, destroyed his own car, and uh, has got some drugs on him. Has failed the roadside um, drugs test. Um, oh dear. All that because he wanted to do But the job's not over yet. Sophie and Chris head back to the Nick because Sophie's got a hunch about the girl she searched. The female, when I asked her if she had anything on her, uh, just before I started searching her, it was so obvious she did. It was ridiculous. She might as well have just said, yeah, and here it is, and handed it to me. And I suspect that she's probably secreted um, something about her person, uh, possibly put it down her pants, in a bra, all those kind of things that you can't really search at the roadside for. Um, so we'll be looking to get her strip searched uh, down at the custody area. Um, so that if she has hidden anything about a body, it can, it can be recovered. Good job, big dog. Lisa would never. When they get back to the cop shop, the donut <coughs> driver is already being booked in. Hello. What's up, cop? And officers searching the girl have made an. Hello. What's up, cop? I know he ain't trying to act hard, then instantly go to a cry. Well, calm down. <laughs> and officers searching the girl have made an extraordinary discovery in the lining of her coat. They found what looks to be about Dang. 50 wraps, uh, possibly heroin, big along with rock a big rock. There. That'll have to be tested to see what that is. A fantastic result. Um, more stupidity from these criminals, man. Why would you bring your whole jab? Like, all right. Really good job from start to finish. The donut driver was arrested for drug driving, failed to stop, Possession with intent to supply Class A drugs, possession of Class B drugs, and breach of bail. His female passenger was also arrested for drugs offences. 
both remain under investigation. All from a simple traffic stop, mighty iffy oaks from little acorns grow. The hilarious thing about it all is he was doing donuts. And he's basically brought this on himself. Yes. Yeah, massively high IQ, I have no doubts. <laughs> Yes, yes, the vehicle is slowing right down from the uh, possible decamp. Stopping a runaway motor is no picnic. Motor <laughs> is no picnic. I don't think this was the desired effect. <laughs> I wonder how much time this driver got. 100 percent But it can involve a sandwich. We do it behind with this third uh, X5. Interceptors hunt in packs. Yeah, we've got all three vehicles together. Yeah, preemptive box, you go first, Steph. I'll go on to offside rear carrot bag. Boxing in bad guys using multiple cars and the dark arts. Moving now, where uh, other? Of tactical pursuit and containment. Or T pack. Turn it off, turn it off, turn it off. I'll break on now. Get out of the car, get out of the car. Get your hands out now, do it yourself. Why are they playing with the dog like that? Man? On the M62, interceptors Ben Pearson and Matt Ransom are en route to assist colleagues, travelling eastbound from Manchester. We are on our way now to a unit that's behind a vehicle that's been used in credit card frauds all the way around West Yorkshire, North Yorkshire. We're going to try and get a box on it, get it stopped and get them detained. Petrolhead Ben's got a passion for 80s hot hatches. He's an advanced driver who's T-Pack trained. Job before police, motorcycle salesman. Like, what? Like, I, 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 I feel like in America, all police officers, this is their first job. Like, they didn't do nothing else before that but police and maybe go to, like, the Army, Navy, Marines, something like that. Like, but in the UK, it just... Everybody was something else before. That's crazy to me. People had real careers before, and all of a sudden they just... I want to be an officer. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just like I, I ain't never experienced it. I just start noticing it on this episode. Though, like everybody the had a life. So tonight has been linked to some serious financial crime. What it sounds like they've been doing is getting credit cards or store cards to a limit of £500 on fraudulent details and they've gone out basically maxing all cards up so they might have a couple of thousand pounds worth of gearing built. So it could be a really good job really. The plan is to use T-Pack to box in the suspect with three cop cars. Dave, just while it's quiet on air now, where do you want us? I'll go past it as car one and then the two cars behind me go right and one of the rear please. I bet, no worries. Two units are behind the suspect, but it takes three to T-Pack. So Ben and Matt plot up at a roundabout, ready to join the pack. All right, so it's coming. Three, one, we're going to slip road now. There it is. Bingo! It's time to tee pack. Three one. We're behind. We have the third vehicle. As the third vehicle. Why do they call it a tee pack? It kind of do look like a tee pack, but is that the only reason? Paul, their role is to block the suspect's car from behind. Dave, I've got rear three one. Yeah, that's you see. That's a lot of people down now. The signal comes in and they strike. Box on. This guy is going nowhere. Stop, stop, stop. It took less than 30 seconds. Let, let me see him. Hang on. The driver doesn't know what's hit him. <laughs> yeah, he's mad aggressive. This is a married man. What are you talking We'll take it off at your way. Uh, yeah, we'll take it off somewhere, yeah. 
they'll move to a safer section of the road to search the car. But the early signs are promising. Well, there's a TV in back in there. If they find evidence... Okay. I forgot these was the scammers, the fraudsters. ...of credit card fraud, then this fella is in it up to his neck. These kind of crimes cost the UK more than a billion pounds last year, and the worst offenders face 10 years at Her Majesty's pleasure. Got to make sure you get protection on first, don't you? Don't want to cross-contaminate out. I'll put in here fingerprints where there shouldn't be fingerprints. Oh, that's not like that's not his name. That's a different name. That's a different name. Matt's found a dozen credit cards in the car. That's a different name. That's a different name. That's a different name. That's a different name. Is that a different name too? Yeah, yeah, with women's name. <laughs> we'll see you in federal court. <laughs> we'll see you in the feds. Federal prison. Names on the front. <laughs> That's different there as well. Alright. This bloke's beard is a slight giveaway, they're not his. Have a seat back in there, sir. I must caution you to tell them you don't have to say anything, but now I'm in the fence. Not sure about you, but I don't carry around 12 credit cards, all in different names. So obviously he's been going around different shops with different credit cards, buying a lot of high value goods. As well as the cards and the high value goods, they found a wad of cash. Right, let's go. Right. Let's move. Should have went home, my boy. Using stolen or fake documents to open credit cards in someone else's name is called application fraud. Uh, they say it's a victimless crime, but technically it's not. They could even have gone through people's bins that don't shred the mail properly. Uh, they could be victims as well. And I've, I've spoken to a lot of people who have had the details cloned and then it's affected their credit score in the long run, so they can't say it's a victimless crime. Back at the station, the suspect is booked in. While the interceptors do some detective work. That's a receipt for the television that has come from Darlington today. So the guy that bought that TV is going to the So if we can link him going to that shop. There's a paper trail straight from the goods in the car to the dodgy credit cards. Bro crap, all the receipts. So are these credit cards or debit cards? Because what? why would you keep the receipts unless you plan on to return them? Because in America, if you if it's a debit card and you return it, you can get it. You get the cash back option. But these are credit cards. That'll do nicely. It'll lead deeper and further afield than what we've got now. But this is the vehicle we're trying to look out for. This is the one we've got, and um, we've got a good result from it. Matt's also pretty chuffed with the evening's haul. We've got twelve bank cards and twelve different names. Which I've said quite he probably gonna get all ten of the years that the, Her Majesty got to offer. Unusual phones, checkbooks, um, goods which have been purchased with these cards. Got TVs, tablets. But yeah, so we've done well. Good stop. The driver, with more cards than Clinton's, was arrested for fraud offences. The investigation is ongoing. Yeah, you know, you're going to prison, federal. Head time. Still to come. Back for Gary. It's nearly midnight. This is the longest police interceptors we have ever watched. And interceptor Steve Sug Sugit is on the midweek night shift. Sug Sugit. We're looking at uh, going out in the area, put ourselves in a position where we can respond to assist colleagues. If that's a, a vehicle pursuit, we'll get out there and do it. Being the Sarge is Sug's dream job. He likes nothing more than ridding the roads of dangerous drivers. It's not long before a call comes in. Queen's Road, heading towards King's Road Junction. There's a vehicle failing to stop, uh, initially failed for the uh, beat unit. It's now uh, failing to stop for the tape back unit. We're just making our way to the area. A white Citroen is giving specialist TPAC units the runaround. And the driver's clearly got something to hide. West, west. We've got a TPAC unit coming up behind us. He's all over the roads, flying through junctions, and putting lives in danger. 
boots it to 60 miles an hour. Straight across, straight across, towards the back deck. Before cranking things up a notch. To crank it, then. Speed is 70. 70. But as he heads into a housing estate, interceptors are confident the game will soon be up. Yeah, into Bagley, into Bagley. No way out of here. But the driver's got other ideas. Into a dead end, through a snicket, the back of Morrison's, the back of the Morrison's depot. The Citroen's gone off road and is heading towards a recreation ground behind a supermarket. In total darkness, it's not long before he disappears from view. Ah, well, the chopper's out. Forget about it, buddy. And Pastor Code 6 looking for it now. But he can't escape from the eye in the sky. The helicopter's above, so that'll make a search now. Give us an idea as to maybe where the vehicle is. So we're just waiting for an update, really. While Suggs keeps his eyes peeled, the lead interceptor heads deeper into the recreation ground. What's on the ground? Is that, oh, this is dark. Yeah, three one, it looks like uh, it carried on on the path out towards Woodall Road. Yeah, I've got sight of its tail lights. He's found the Citroen, but the occupants are long gone. See if I wonder we are getting a description. The copper, the chopper didn't. Description of uh, suspects. Echo three seven. It was an Asian male, or I believe it was a female passenger in the car as well. Suggs has spotted something. I've got potential suspects that have gone into the uh, one-stop shop on uh, Gain Lane. Male and female, but it's very dark here. She had a white card going on. Yeah, received. I can uh, discount these two then. It's a false alarm for Suggs. But the chopper unit reckon they've hit the jackpot. Of course. Hey, Pastor, we can we get a unit onto Sunny Bank Lane, which is off uh, Bradford Road? We've got two people uh, walking towards Bradford Road on Sunny Bank Lane. A male and female have been spotted about 50 metres apart, and the bloke is acting shifty. They're not walking together, but they are clearly aware of each other's presence. Suggs is just around the corner. First one, I think, is the male. He's about halfway down the road towards you, maybe 100 metres away. As the two suspects approach, Suggs and the other two units sit tight and wait for the moment to strike. Yeah, past three one, they are very slowly walking towards you. It might be worth the stomach bubbling a little bit. Hold on now. Gotta chill. <laughs> I woke up, I didn't have coffee. You know what that do. And I didn't have honey bunches of oats. You know what that do, man. That's fiber packed. But I'ma sit here through it. I'm going to sit here and let these guts bubble for y'all. You hear me? Worth now, you've got a few units there moving off. While the lead unit heads straight for the female, Suggs moves in on the male. I'm trying to be low key. Take your hands out of your pockets. Down on your knees now. Come here, you're under arrest, all right? Dangerous driving. Don't have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you don't mention when questioned something which you like a line in court. Anything you do, say, maybe give me an evidence. You understand? Right. Over. The suspect comes quietly. Oh, in fact, you come, in fact, come to my car. What have we got any um, pockets? And his pockets are clear. Of course. Time to find out why this bloke was so keen the to get away. The man had been out of the car for 25, 30, 40 minutes. Who's the, who's the girl? Is that your girlfriend? What? Is that your girlfriend? It's not in there. No, she is. Actually not. Actually not. Yeah, she is, yeah. She... We've just seen on the helicopters and things like that. 
with questions about the girl making the guy twitchy, Sud's sixth sense goes into overdrive. What, what's the matter with you? What? What's the matter with you? No. You got a bit of a sweat on? Huh? You got a bit of a sweat on? Yeah, you got a little bit of that booger sugar on. This is what's wrong with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's all right. You don't want to talk to me now? No. Okay. He's clammed up. But the girls confirmed she was in the car and that the man was driving. So Shit. what happened there? What's the hold on now? Better for one. This is getting intricate. Can I have an update on the status of this vehicle, please? Is it stolen, cloned, etc.? Yeah, we say thank you. Potentially this car might be nicked. Yeah. It's not shown as stolen, but it's certainly not him. That's uh, the owner of it or insured. Okay. He's under arrest on suspicion of theft of the vehicle and dangerous driving, and uh, we'll establish fully exactly what's gone off here. With the situation a mystery and the man's true identity still, still unknown, unknown huh? they head back to the station where both suspects can be questioned. How old are you? 20. OK, blow through there. Total, stop. Blow. That's it. Keep blowing, keep blowing, keep blowing, keep blowing, keep blowing, keep blowing, keep blowing. Keep blowing. Stop. OK, that's it. Zero. Zero. Man. That's how I be saying, like, I don't, who, who, who do they think be breathing through them things? Like, how do people even sustain that much breath to be blowing? You know what I'm saying? Like, who, what, Beyonce? Singers? Adele? Ed Sheeran? Like, I'm not none of them. My lung capacity is not there. You're going to have to take some blood. Mm, not quite. Huh? While he goes to get booked in, Time to get locked up, fam. The female passenger is questioned in a separate room. Sweaty foot. He's oh. denying everything. Yeah, of course he is. And the mystery soon unravels. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. All right, nice one. Cheers, bye. <laughs> it turns out the girl is just 15 years old. God, lock him up. Throw away the key. I don't even know what's going on, but there's nothing in common that this this grown man and this 15 year old have to talk about. You know what I'm saying? Like, like what is what's the conversation? In, in, like, what 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 do y'all have in common to talk about? Further information has come to light now that this um, male is also suspect of rape um, on this female passenger that we've also arrested. Um, so now we've uh, liaised with the detective inspector here at Bradford who's uh, asking that we uh, now treat her as a victim and further arrest him for child abduction. He later pleaded guilty to two offences of sexual activity with a child. Oh my days. You talking about some time to get locked up, fam? You finna get they they you are not gonna be a, a favorite in there. <laughs> he also pleaded guilty to possession of cannabis, dangerous driving, and driving without a license and insurance. He was sentenced to seven years and nine months in jail. Of course, as he should be, maybe a little longer. But you gotta think about it, seven years and nine months for him, this is probably gonna do three. That three is gonna feel like 15. Because he's never gonna be at peace or at ease in there. Because of his charges. Across the UK, more than 10,000 homes are burgled every week. Although catching a burglar red-handed is rare, by law, homeowners can use reasonable force to protect themselves and their property. That's cat. But it's probably safe. I feel like that's cat. Safer to call the cops. It's the very early hours. Intercept. I'm not gonna lie. Reasonable force for me, if you're burglaring me and you're in my house, reasonable force is I feel like my life is in danger. So the reasonable force I did was meet your energy. I wanted you to feel like that. 
It's as simple as that for me. And that would be my case. <laughs> Does Gary McMaster? That's what I felt like my life was in danger. And Stefan Rushworth have just been called it to was a suspected break-in at an address south of the city centre. Do you know where the street is? It's all right. Gary loves working the weekend night shift because some of the characters he meets remind him of his favourite TV show, The Walking Dead. Um, here, here, here. Here, see if we're just staying out. The occupants of the house have reportedly caught a burglar red-handed and kept him detained until officers arrive. Imagine. Oh, yeah. Hello. What's happened? The kitchen. Your house, it should be here. Hi. Right. Put your hands out, fella. The two burly occupants had the intruder pinned to the staircase. This bloke clearly picked on the wrong house. You're under arrest at the moment. Uh. On suspicion of uh, burglary, OK? Come on. He looks a little worse for wear. Hopefully, he can stay awake long enough for a Q&A. Why are you sweating so much? He's having withdrawals. He's running a marathon. He was trying to get his next little fix. I you not be all over you. I'm sure that gully should get done for that, shouldn't I? Done for what? Assault. Assault. He's detained you by the looks of it, which he's got every right to. He just burgled his house. The sweaty burglar hasn't learned his lesson and now wants to go back in the house to get something. Some of your things were still in there. What was that? Some sweets. Your sweets? Yeah. Why, why are your sweets in there? Apart from a small bag of Haribo, his pockets are clean. But he does have something in his sweaty hand, and Gary's clocked it. Hey, put that out, idiots. Somehow he's managed to light a cigarette. I'm on a drug. I'm not interested. You can't smoke in the back of our car. This is Frank Gallagher. They didn't call Frank Gallagher. That's tough. Why not? I mean, why not? You're in custody now, kid. I'm not to put a dead pot. Gary confiscates his roll-up and his lighter. Honestly. I but if at first, first you don't succeed... What have I just told you? What have I, what have I just told you? All right, boss. Hey. If it's you, no, you can't. Then Why are they treating Frank Gallagher like this? Frank Gallagher just outsmarted you and almost lit up two cigarettes back to back? Tough. Door. That doesn't mean that you didn't grab another and start sparking up another. All right, all right. There's no, there's no need to so do he it. had another lighter right. as well. Why are you doing it? Why are you doing it? Sorry. Why? What do you mind? Right. Ah, my heart, my hands. Anything that's in your pockets is now coming out. And you're not having anything in that car. I don't care. You're not having anything now. Must have had a secret hiding place for those fags. You're lighting up a cigarette in the back of my car. Shall we know? Going off dumpling. Pardon? Dump. Dumpling? Yeah, Meanwhile, Stefan's been checking out the crime scene. Uh, so which window has it come through? This, this one. This one. This one. Bar pen. It seems Smokey Joe clambered in through a kitchen window before being caught trying to make off with a TV. Um, he said he's left his sweets. Bro, this is straight out of a movie. What is happening? Are these his sweets here? Sure. They're his? Yes. I'll take him his sweets back then. He looks all right. Local character, doesn't he? Nah, right, let's get out of here. They take him back to the cop shop. What's your name, kid? Where a hard night breaking and entering finally catches up with him. It's right, it's telling us your name. Any particular reason? What else are you wanted for? Whoever this character is, Cops reckon he must have previous. Wake up. Up this way. Maybe they'll have more luck when they book him in. What's your name? Go on. Or maybe not. We need to search you. We need to go through this still the same procedure. If you comply with us, it makes it a lot faster for you. Call Fiona. 
Last name is Gallagher. First name is Frank. Ian Lip Fiona. Uh, 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 you know what I'm saying? The rest of them. Get to Sell a lot faster. When they go through his pockets, he gives them another mouthful. Don't spit and you get a hood on. All right. Spit again, you get the hood on. So it's back to the cells. There you go. Now the bathroom, please. Tell us your name. Dang. Eventually, the man offers up his name in return for some home comforts. He says, if you tell, give us your details, we'll give you a blanket. And he just told us who he is. <laughs> We've checked on local systems and it's him. So I'll confirm with his picture. He may be sweaty, but he's not wet behind the ears. It turns out he's a notorious and prolific burglar with more than a dozen convictions. He's currently wanted for breach of a court order. He's not very good at the profession he's chosen. If he got a dozen, y'all done caught this man more than he just got away. A wrong one in the wrong place at the wrong time. Hold on. Thanks. Thanks. Again. Unusual to catch a burglar in the act. It doesn't happen that often. So a good result there. Not only getting caught in the act for one offence, but being caught for something that he's been wanted for for a couple of months as well. All in, good job. The man was charged with burglary, breach of a court order, and failing to provide a sample for Class A drugs. In court, he pleaded guilty and was sentenced to a total of three years and four months behind yeah. bars. With his convictions for burglary in double digits, perhaps it's finally time to consider a change of career. That's, that's what I'm saying, it's over. You're not good. Still to come. Still. Right. It's approaching rush hour and Claire Gray and Nick Priestley are on patrol in the city centre. That was fun, that was. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Nick thinks he's clocked a driver on his phone, an offence that can earn you six points and a £200 fine. Claire pulls a Yui. On your phone is six points? For a closer look. Which one? I swear police in Florida don't even bother you for certain. The police out here, they really don't. You gotta be really doing something insane for them to pull you over in Florida. I'm doing a German one. The Audi? Yeah. It's a left hand drive motor with European plates. But where's the driver? Speak English. Yes or no? Okay, go down there to the lights. Turn left. Are you alive? It's chilled, isn't it? Are you are you alive? Sit upright and drive properly. You're not asleep. Are you alive? You're asleep. You don't speak English. Right. Just go down there and turn left. I think somebody's stolen his spine. <laughs> Takeaway fan Nick is the curry king of West Yorkshire. He may be tea pack trained, but he'd take a gel frazy over a hot pursuit any day. Wait, he's the curry king of West Yorkshire? Why do you... He likes to be called that? Hiya. Hello. He's turned the engine off for me, please. Yeah. Are you all right? What? Are you OK? Okay. Just trying to get in out. What? Just get out. It's really easy. Okay. Get out. What? Get out. Yeah. It's easier that way. The laid back driver finally obliges and suddenly everything's clear. Yeah. Ah, right. You've got okay. a problem. Okay. One moment. To... No, no, it's okay. That's no, all right. No, no. Don't come no. In. Okay. Okay. Time to find out if he can get his story straight. I think I can only turn left. Oh, okay. Have you got a problem with your neck? What? Have you got a problem with your neck? No, no, I, I think I think you do. You've got a problem with your neck? Yeah, problem. Yeah. Should be driving. Look through that window. Yeah. Look through that window. Go on, try a bit for, have a look. Yeah, have a look. No, I can't. It's perfect. Yeah. Good job, we didn't ask him to write then. Counting, uh, what language do you speak? Uh, Romanian. Romanian. Yeah. He got a crook in his neck driving? Yeah, I must say. That's tough. Wow. Is you going to the hospital? 
Doing a bit of Google Translate. She lets him use her phone while Nick goes in search of the man's paperwork. It's a nice car. Work. I have got a friend that's got a similar problem, and he, you know, literally can't look right, and he couldn't. He asked me to look out a window, and he was like he was shot putting. Stream. Stream. A stream. Do you live? Stream. Do you live in England? Do you live here? Can't multitask. We're just having a chat on Google. He says Let's he's come go. from Romania and he's. Good though with the gifted sir. Salute. Appreciate you. Pulled his neck on a stream. Well, that clears that one up. Pulled his neck on a stream. He shouldn't be driving, should he? Yeah. No, that's what I've said to him. Although the man's been pulled for using his phone, Nick reckons he shouldn't be behind the wheel at all. He's not in proper control. He's driving that Joe Care. Dangerous driving, there's all sorts. It's dangerous at the end of the day. You know, you can't see anybody coming. Is this a jail right behind y'all, too? From right hand side. And that's why when we're talking to him, I said, Are you all right? I thought we were dead. Okay. Meanwhile, back in the car, a breakthrough. Habla Espanol. Habla Espanol un poco, si? Y esta es de otro car. Si? Tu coche? The man speaks Spanish, a language Claire has been known to dabble in. Si? ¿Cuántos años tienes? Dos semanas. Ya me voy a la Romania, vengo otra vez. She may speak un poco espanol, but all the man's paperwork is in Romanian. Have you got insurance? What? Insurance on the car. Okay. He's trying to say this is his insurance certificate. Which it bloody might be, I don't know. It's in Romanian, I can't read Romanian. Okay. He's saying that covers him to, to drive, but... What? I have to say, I don't think my Romanian is good as your Spanish. <laughs> my Romanian's rubbish. I don't know any Romanian. The man insists he's insured, but Claire and Nick can't verify it, so they're left with little choice. Uh, right, well, obviously, we've taken car. The issue is that we, we don't know what these documents are. Now, I know, it's, you know, we can be flippant about this and say, you know, well, we could, they could be fake. We don't know this this car is insured or not. Well, anyway, if it comes back real, y'all have to let him go anyway. This is nice Audi, bro. Right? i definitely whip this. So, if Tech Nick will report him for no insurance for being on his phone, but it's up to him now to prove that, yes, it is insured. Okay. Um, and it'll stay with us until we have that okay. proof. After we go to PlayStation, it'll be released back to him. The car is seized, but the man is free to go. Are you all right there? Are you okay? This boy finna walk down the street like these. We're good. <laughs> yeah. All right. No, no, it's all right. I'm just. I'm gonna open the door. We're good. You fall out. Go. <laughs> That's the way I go. Damn it. Should be careful crossing road. Hopefully, he remembers to look both ways first. Oh, we gotta turn his whole body to look <laughs> to the right. I bet he turns left. The man's insurance details eventually checked out, but he was later reported for driving whilst using his phone. Again? Oh, OK. It can go now, Mr. Pain in the neck. Told you you can't turn right. All right, man, that was the longest episode on record. You get me. Tell to leave a like, comment, uh, subscribe, turn on your post, don't go on.